Welcome to another episode of At Home with Kathy, our Renew Project season, our third season of painting with Annie Sloan Chalk Paint. This season we have been very fortunate to have a number of pieces donated from friends and family and co-workers. I'm painting them and in May we are going to be donating or we're going to be auctioning the pieces on an online auction and we will be donating all the proceeds to Chrysalis House Women and Children's Shelter for their building fund. As you can see this piece is sturdy but a little bit bright and maybe we all don't want hot pink in our houses although I can think of maybe some five-year-olds who would really like this color and the desk has some damage so I've sanded that off I've given the whole thing a good scrub we have been using the colorist magazines from Annie Sloan as our inspiration. I couldn't find anything that quite fit for this one, so I went back to the quick and easy paint transformations, the 50 Project Book. And there are two in here that sort of resonate with how this table might look. The first one is the Victorian table. Now this is not Victorian, but what I liked about it was the little detail. This table has a little edge all around it and I thought it might be kind of nice to bring that out. So while this didn't actually have an edge, what Annie did in this was create an edge. The other inspiration is here where again an edge was painted into the panel side of this cabinet. So again we're not doing this cabinet but the idea of accentuating with a little bit of contrasting paint is an interesting one and I think one that would look nice on this desk. So when I asked the neighbor who donated the table what color she would like when she originally thought about repainting it, she said I always thought it would be yellow. So here we go we're going to do Arles which is a harvesty yellow, a golden yellow. That's going to be our main color. But our contrast color is going to be the Provence. And Provence and Arles together are two very complementary colors. Just using my little sticks here. So what we're going to do is we're going to paint our inner little detail here with Provence. And then to add a little bit more detail, we're going to make the legs look like we dipped them. So we're going to measure part way up here. And there is damage on the legs. So we're going to measure part way up, going to mark it, we're going to paint that in Provence, and then we'll paint the rest in Arles. So it's eventually going to be a sweet little standalone piece. We'll replace the knob, and we might paint the inside of the drawer, although it looks like it's in pretty good condition. So I've given it a wash, I've sanded out the rough spots, let's start painting. So as you can see, there's damage on this leg. It also has a little bit of an angle. So we want to paint a sock past that. So when I measure that, I'm at about seven inches. So I'm gonna measure seven inches on every leg. And I'm just gonna make sure that when I paint with my Provence, I paint past that. So here's my Provence. And I'm painting up past that, just feathering so I don't have a hard edge of paint. And we'll later on, what we do when we go to do the arls, is we'll measure up again, and we'll put a mark, uh, tape mark here so that I have a nice clean edge when it comes time to do the sock part. With a piece this simple in its, in its lines, I could go a little bit complicated, I could make it very simple, but one of the rules of thumb is to make a piece that's simple, keep it simple. And this adding two colors is just a nice way to give a little bit of detail without making it complicated. Now I might have to do two coats because this pink is a pretty strong color. I'm just gonna paint her socks. I'm going to do this to all four legs and then we'll paint the detail on the table. Now we have this little groove. I need to make sure I've got a lot of paint in here. 
And the reason is, it's the groove has a, has little bubbles where it's the uh, wood is pulled away. Probably MDF. And I don't want to see those. I want a nice smooth. But at the same time, I don't want to leave a ridge of paint. So I'm going to paint and then smooth. I'm using this flat brush for this because I want to make sure I get my bristles right down into the sides of this little detail, this little etch. And then I'm coming back to smooth it so that I don't have a ridge of paint here. And it will likely take two coats of this to cover and give the depth of color that I'm looking for. I could do this with a thin brush, a little skinny brush, a detail brush, but it, I might as well do it this way, work the paint right in which is what I really need to do because I find the detail brushes are great for detail but I end up going back and dipping so often for paint that what I lose in or what I gain in not wasting paint I lose in the time it takes and I'm not big into that I like to make my time efficient so we're just going to keep going all the way around until we've filled in this little detail and then we'll let it dry and we'll probably do a second coat. I'm just going to let this dry, see if we need a second coat. And I am just going to take the door pull off. I think what's going to have to happen here, see how this comes out? There's Sometimes pulls are in with a, with a bolt. So the screw in part is here. The po and in the knob and you push it in and you lock it with a, with a nut. In this case, the drawer has been put on, the drawer front has been put on afterwards. So I'm going to have to undo the drawer front to get at this so that I can put the kind of pull on that I would like it. And the reason they've done it here is because this drawer has a divider. So if I'm trying to center a knob in the middle and I push the knob, screw it in, I'm going to have to get rid of this in order to make it centered. So it's a little bit complicated, but we're going to take this drawer front off and figure out what to do. So my detail has been done in the Provence. And now the trick is going to be to keep a clean line. If I use a brush, I run the risk of my arls running into or being brushed into the little trough. Zoe is here to inspect. So what I've done is I'm going to use a little roller brush, a sponge roller. I've poured some arls into my paint tray. And i got to say, I've never painted a whole piece before with a sponge roller. But I looked at this, and the lines on the top, the, line, the leg is very square. I think I can actually use a sponge roller to finish a lot of this project. So I'm going to give it a little run here. But what I want to see is, do I get a nice clean edge without any dripping or bleeding through into the little detail? And I think I do. Now it will definitely take two coats, maybe three, because the pink is so intense underneath the arrows. But what a nice color that's going to be when I have the Provence. Now you don't want to squeeze too much down on your brush. You want a nice even rollered finish. And you want to make sure you don't have any lines. You'll notice that what I'm doing is coming out when, before I go down on the edge of the table here. I'm kind of getting rid of my excess paint on the flat part of the table so that I don't have a drip. Then I'll go down and get the nice clean edge. A little extra paint here where there's a little bit of a damage. So let's get a first coat on here and evaluate and we will definitely need a second. My blue isn't quite dry yet, but we're going to mark it for the tape, the mask, the painter's tape. I'm going to make a little pencil line at seven inches. And I'm going to do that in two places, mostly so I can get my tape even, because I need a nice clean edge for doing the arls on the leg. So then 
below the mark and this is a tape roll that somebody four-legged carried around one day so it has teeth marks on one side I want the nice clean edge on the Earl side and I go all the way around make sure I have a nice fit come around and rip it off and do the same thing over here nice clean edge nice to work with something square because you get that nice clean edge very easily and rip it off now I'm going back to my roller and we're going to roller to that point again I don't want a lot of paint and I really want to roll away from the edge of the tape if I roll towards the tape with a loaded roller I may push paint underneath I don't want that so I'm gonna do that go up I'm gonna do the inside same thing when I come down here I'm going to roll away now one thing you'll notice with a roller is you sometimes get a buildup if I push hard I get a buildup of paint I don't want that because it's the same as a, a edge of with the, using the brush so I'm just going to go along and very gently roll out that edge of paint it's actually a little bit of a ridge I'll do the same thing here roll towards the leg away from the tape I am going to have to get the brush to do part of this table because the roller doesn't fit in here where there's a, a groove in the detail of the edge so I'll have to do that with the brush but I'm going to roller my other leg then I will flip the table do the same thing I can tell already I'm going to have to do two at least coats of paint and I don't know what paint this was chances are it was a latex paint which means it will adhere very well my chalk paint will adhere very well but I might want to let it sit a little bit to dry thoroughly and I am going to have to get my round brush out it, well the roller is great it doesn't get into all the little nooks and crannies you still end up getting out your brush to finish all the paint but I can tell right now these two colors are going to be beautiful together when we're not seeing all the heat of that pink. I put my roller away, grab my brush. I can dip right into the paint tray because I already have it out. And I'm going to go along here and do the routed out edge. So again, I work from the middle because if I work from the end, I'm likely to have a big glob of paint, which I don't want to do. So I have a nice clean oop, underneath the desk. Wherever the roller didn't get, I'm just going to go over that with my brush to give it a nice Earl's finish. So I'll flip the desk over, do the other legs, do the front, do the back, because this kind of desk, this could also be a sofa table, which would be really nice. It's not that wide, it's very it's slim, it um, doesn't take up a lot of space visually, Makes it's a really all-purpose kind of piece, so it's a great piece to have been donated for us to use on the project. And I am going to do the back on this. We don't paint the back on everything because most pieces of furniture go against a wall. But something like this could end up standalone or you could see the back. So we'll paint the back. When you come back, we'll have two coats on this. We're going to do a very simple finish on it. We're just going to clear wax. So we're going to let it sit and have a good drying time. And then in one of our future episodes, we will do the finish. Thank you for joining me today. I look forward to seeing you in another season of At Home with Kathy or another episode of At Home with Kathy next week. There are three ways you can participate in our Renew project. One, Donate a piece for me to paint. Send me a picture though, I can't paint everything. And we're still looking for four or five pieces that we need to paint and we will donate paint and donate them to the auction or to Chrysalis House. Two, you paint along with me. 
Come in and get some paint. We'll consult on colors. We'll give you a discount on your purchase. You paint along with me and donate your piece to the auction in May and we'll make sure those funds go to directly to Chrysler's house or three. What if you don't want to paint or donate? You could donate cash. Project Renew is a building fundraiser for Chrysler's House. You can contact them directly to make arrangements on how to donate. Welcome to the project.